All right, so today we're going to be going over an 820-3435 motherboard that has no backlight. Now, one of the very, very common issues with these when they have no backlight is backlight fuse is blown. So when I go over here to measure the backlight fuse, you're going to see on the screen there that the backlight fuse is blown because OL. Now, if I were to measure resistance to ground on backlight output over here like this, you'd notice that my number is really, really low which indicates a short to ground. There's no purpose in replacing the fuse. There's no purpose in replacing any fuse on any circuit if there's a short to ground, because the fuse itself is just going to blow again right after you do that. So what I'm going to do here is try to figure out what it is that's shorted to ground. Now, the connector itself doesn't really look like it's shorted to ground. It doesn't look any particular form of nasty. So if I were to go over to the connector over here, let's just let me see this so I can see what it is you guys are seeing. You know. Connector doesn't really strike me as nasty. What does strike me as nasty is that capacitor, that capacitor. Let's just see what the LED driver looks like for the hell of it. Yeah, I mean, the LED driver doesn't really look nasty. Um, so my guess is going to be on the, the capacitor, even though the capacitor is very rarely what is shorted to ground. Now, here's what makes this entire process a little bit more difficult than other type of short detection. So let's say I'm wrong and the short is actually inside the LCD connector. If I'm wrong, and the short is inside the LCD connector, and I send voltage to the board, it's going to take a lot to actually get two pieces of metal that are touching hot. It's not going to be like a resistor or a capacitor or an inductor or anything like that that's shorted. It's, it's, it's just a big hunk of metal. So if I wind up putting heat, uh, power through the board to try to expose that short, I'm going to wind up uh, burning my entire motherboard, which is, which is no good. So I can't use my standard short detection method when I have a connector on the line. So I'm just going to start by removing this really nasty looking capacitor and go from there and hope that perhaps this solves my problem. Who knows? It's rarely, if ever, the output capacitors, but let's see. I could always be wrong. So I've turned the heat up on my FR801 all the way. This is a big piece to get off on a board that has a lot of internal heat sinking. I shouldn't say internal heat sinking because I don't feel it's the right thing to say. I forget, I, well, uh, this board material is, is, it just absorbs heat a lot more than the older board material. I know I'm using the wrong terminology for it because I'm sick and stuffed up and tired. But, okay, so let's see. So my short seems to have gone away. So as you can see on the multimeter here, when I put the red probe on ground and the black probe on backlight output, it's not the number that I want. The number that I want is somewhere between 0.519 and 0.546, but that is much closer to the number that I want, and it is going up and up and up. So I can make the assumption that that it was the cause of my problem, and that if I just get myself another capacitor and replace the fuse, that there's a good chance that I have backlight. So let's go ahead and do that. Ready? So... Let's get a tip that's a little bit more appropriate for the task here. B Beep. Who the fuck made that thing decide to do that? I want to know who at Hacko thought it would be a good idea to just make the iron beep incessantly when you don't have a tip plugged in. Like, what is there to be warned about? Shut the fuck up. Warn me when this thing is just sitting out like this hot. Really. Like, don't, don't warn me when the fucking thing is, has no tip. That's just dumb. I don't know who comes up with this bullshit. Okay, so. Get some flux here. Beep. I would unplug the speaker in it, but I just love hearing that beep that says, I'm ready. Let's go. Beep. Beep, I'm ready. So make that a little bit smaller. Eh. What are you going to do? So. Take capacitor off of donor board. And here's one of the things that I noticed newbies doing that's silly. They'll put this under the microscope and then they'll take... Then they'll put the component on the table. So they'll take the component off of the donor board inside the microscope. They'll put the donor board component on the table. They'll take their board. They'll put it back onto the microscope. They'll pick the component up off the table and put it there. That's a lot of work. 
I, ri I f keep the board that I'm working on under the microscope. This is the one where I need to precisely place the component. Then, when I'm done uh, removing the component, I, outside of the microscope, not caring about accurate or precision of any kind, I'll remove the component that I want to steal from the donor motherboard. Because again, I'm not placing it, I'm ripping it off. Why do I need a microscope? Why do I need precision? Why would I take this out just to have to put it back in? Because again, this is all about efficiency because a lot of the time you're replacing components not knowing what is wrong, but just to try to diagnose a problem when you're doing that, being able to do things quickly is really, really important. So now let's switch back to the microscope camera and I'm gonna heat up the board. Now I'm gonna wait for the solder on the board to melt. Before I place this, then I place this. I block the hot airflow for a second, so, oh well. Have it pushed down there. Just in case it wasn't pushed down there, I'm gonna add a little flux and push from the top because I want the capacitor to be flat in the board. Then once I'm convinced it's flat in the board, I'll go over it with the beveled tip soldering iron. Okay, so we got you in place. Now, last move here is going to be a little bit of flux on each side. Wait for my bevel tip to heat up. Come on, heat mofo. Beep. Okay. And we do the same for the other side. So I'm making sure that I'm touching both the capacitor and I'm also pressing down to make sure that I'm touching the pad. I want to heat everything that I want the solder to flow to. That's good. I'm happy. And now that there's no excess solder, make it flow into place nicely. Okay, now it's sitting exactly where it should be sitting from the factory. So see what I did there when I was done placing it and I was done removing the excess solder? With some flux still left there, I heated it up and the surface tension pretty much pulled it into place. So with each one of those solder joints, um, each one of those pads with solder on it is going to have an equal amount of power to you know, kind of be like quicksand and pull my component into place. So both of those pads are kind of pulling the component into place. So since they both have about an equal amount of power, it's going to wind up centering my component to where it's supposed to be and where it's most structurally sound on the board. Now, with that said, actually, why did I turn off my air filter? I have a backlight fuse to replace. Oh, <laughs> dumbass. All right, so that's the fuse. With the P. it because I don't have a rework station. Yeah, yeah, you keep coming up with excuses. I'll keep doing it myself always. The way that works. So many people say I can't replace the fuse because I don't have a rework station. I can't take the fuse off because I don't have a hot air station. Did you see me use a hot air station to take that fuse off? Yeah. You can place it without a rework station as well. This is one thing that really kills me, is that, that whole argument of, you don't understand, I'm just starting out, I can't buy a hot air station. Well, I do understand, I didn't start out with a hot air station, I made do with what I had and did the job the right way. Whereas you're, you, you, so that I could make the money I needed to buy a hot air station, whereas you refuse to do that and somehow expect my sympathy? Uh, no. 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 So as you can see, it is possible to place. It's not going to be the prettiest looking thing in the world, but it is possible. Now, if I were smart, what I would have done is I would have, uh, I would have only put solder on one pad so that I could have this lay perfectly flat with the board. But I didn't do that, because at the end of the day, I do have a hot air station. So I can just do this. And... But ultimately, if I didn't have a hot air station, I could have one pad flat, one pad soldered, solder it to the one pad, then solder the other pad manually once I have the component down on the board, and I'd be fine. 
So I'm going to double check, make sure that the fuse that I just put on there is good. And I'm also going to make sure that I don't have a short to ground before I decide to power this on. Because that would be really silly if I powered this on with a short to ground. So fuse is good. And backlight output says not shorted to ground. So at this point, I think I'm good to try the board and see if it works. So let's see. What do you think I get? Backlight or fire? Backlight or fire? Oh, what do I get? Okay, so we're going to plug the screen in. We're going to plug the power in. Tell him, give me five minutes. He's a. Going to plug the fan in and the DC inboard cable. And let's see what we get on the screen. The other thing that I think would be smart to do. And something that you should do whenever you have a no backlight problem. Just to rule out the screen is make sure that you have a backlight. You make sure that there's no short to ground after you plug the screen in. Because if you have a short to ground after you plug the screen in, then you're back to the original fault case. So, I have plugged the screen in. And my measurement here is... 0 0.521. No short to ground. Okay. So... Let's do this. I am confident that this will have a backlight. Oh, you're at 2013. You're going to turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Annoying little fuck. Okay, so this will be a forearm exercise. Come on, show me a question mark. Fine, don't. See that? That's a light. I'm good. I have no heatsink plugged in, so I'm not going to keep that on all day. And that's that. So I, with a Haswell Ultrabook processor, I'm totally fine with five seconds without a heatsink in a freezing room. So that's that. And I hope that you learned something.